Hey, it's Angela again. I'm here in Aspen, Colorado, where I'm going to be spending the entire summer at the Aspen Music Festival with hundreds of other classical musicians and students from all over the world. And I can't wait to hang out with them and not talk about classical music. Okay, so the last couple of days I've been really into the album Desert Shore by the German singer Nico. So she's most famous, I think, in mainstream discourse for her work with the Velvet Underground on the album The Velvet Underground and Nico. A very interesting and sort of avant-garde European classical pop. I have been listening to The Color Purple. Um, I've been listening to Beyonce's Lemonade. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been listening to my music that I need to like learn. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. I've been listening um, to a lot of Travis Green. He's a gospel artist. I'm like falling in love with him. A lot of gospel music to keep me like. Pumped. I listen to a lot of hip hop, soul, R and B music, kind of a combination of all three. So I listen to a lot of Kanye West, Kendrick Lamar, Drake, Frank Ocean, Chance the Rapper. Uh, and I also like more relaxed, chill music. I've been listening to some Sufjan Stevens recently. Oh, it would have to be Laurels by Jeremy Kittle. He plays violin and also viola. And he's you know, a classically trained musician, but he's always grown up with the Celtic folk tradition and also has like a master's degree in jazz violin. This week I listened to basically like 30 singles that this dude, Samsa, released. Sad boy lyricist poetry rap that's produced really well and he has a great voice. D'Angelo, Stevie Wonder. Hey yo. Uh, I got into his artist Art, H.U.R.T. Oh, yeah. She's great. Being an Aspen, you just want to listen to things that like don't make you think a lot because you've just been, you know, thinking and playing for hours. Yeah. So I've been listening to what I call like smart pop, I guess. So, you know, like Portugal the Man, like Wolf Mother, Hound Mouth, stuff that you just like can... Good stuff. Thanks. Stuff you can just like listen to and really enjoy because it's so well written, Thank but you it's, you know, also just, it's pop, so you can just sit back and like go, oh, cool. Yeah. Ah, it's there. What do you look for in live performances? People enjoying themselves. Yeah? That's simple. Yeah, because if people are, if I can tell that someone's enjoying themselves on stage, then I'm going to enjoy it. Cool. And if not, if not, then it's like, why am I here? <laughs> I think no matter what kind of music I'm listening to in live performance, I want to go on some kind of journey. I want to be transported somewhere. So whether it's jazz, whether it's classical, whether I'm seeing, you know, Questlove and some of these groups perform, I want to be moved by the music. I want to be transformed. I want to feel that energy radiating out of the performers and, uh, and really experience something different. Do you have a favorite lyric? Uh, I really like... Leonard Cohen, uh, there's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Jeremiah, I love this lyric. There's no we without you and I. Isn't that beautiful? That was really beautiful. Non-classical vocalist, favorite of all time, biggest diva, go. Beyonce! <laughs> but I also do really enjoy Adele. I really enjoy listening to Pink. Um, oh, pink. Yeah, because she, like, when she performs live, it's, like, it's yeah. genuine. And you know mm -hmm. it's genuine versus, like, mm, you could do better. <laughs> All right, guilty pleasure? Um, well, I'll say it again, uh, Britney Spears, particularly old Britney Spears, but also Disney soundtracks. Mm. It's a huge, wow. huge guilty pleasure. Oh, my God. When I listen to some of my favorite Disney songs, I get that full body, like, what's the word for that tingle you get in the top of your head Orgasm? and you almost want to cry? <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> no. When I listen to some Disney songs, I get overwhelmed with, like, that emotion, you know, where I start tearing yeah. up a little bit. I'm like, why am right. I doing this? Right. It's just the Lion King. <laughs> I guess the second to last <laughs> full album I listened to was the Prince of Egypt soundtrack. Wow. Oh my God, you're a great <laughs> I'm really trying to get over like the idea that I should feel bad for liking the things that I, yeah. I like. But I'm really into like 80s divas and like Janet Jackson oh, yeah. and like Paula Abdul. Basically like any song that would be like a good like drag queen lip sync song I think is great. Um, any guilty pleasures that come to mind Ooh, when it comes to I, music? Uh, maybe Toto. 
uh, you know, Africa, love that. Creed. Creed, really? <laughs> Gotta get on the Creed train, <laughs> go back to the 90s. Don't tell anyone about that. Oh, uh, well, all uh, right, I'll delete this no, immediately. No. Uh, what is it about this music that you connect to as a classical musician? I mean, it's a good question. I, I feel like it's a lot more connected to people and their sense of rhythm and their... I love when composers use their own native land folk traditions and integrate it into music. For over 50 years, the Aspen Music Festival has provided a beautiful and incredible space to grow as both a person and a musician. Thank you so much to the festival for being dedicated to providing that space to their donors, and uh, thank you for the additional footage. I also wanted to thank everybody that took time out of their busy schedule to talk to me, and I hope they're all having beautiful summers wherever they are this year. If you want to see more of my journeys, please like or subscribe. I promise there's more to come.